Greetings to you on this fine weekend. Yes, apparently you have to put up with me on weekends as well. Now, well, you don't have to, you could just stop watching the video. But if you are watching, it's appreciated. Now, I thought I'd start making a weekly video where I do a roundup of the week's retro news and what I've been doing regarding my retro lo I'm not sure why I've got inverted quotes. My retro lifestyle it is a retro lifestyle after all during the week and so this week I have been playing a lot of Spy Ring. Spy Ring was originally a 1960s board game. I had the 1980s version and you control various spies around the board with the goal of having to collect four of a particular secret thing, like atoms or microfilm. And I loved this game in the 80s. I loved spies and detectives when you were a kid. Come on, we all did. But this game sort of encapsulated it for me and I've been playing a lot of that and that's been a lot of fun. I've also oh, went a bit crazy on retro gamer manuals. I got this from WH Smiths and I also got this from WH Smiths and I also got this because it's not often I see these in the wild. So, you know, if I saw, I saw three, I was like, shit, I'm having them and I had a five pound off voucher, so come on. I also got the latest copy of Retro Gamer magazine. So I will be looking at all these in future videos. And I finished reading Digital Retro, which is the story of the evolution of the early home micros from the 70s through to the end of the 80s. Really interesting, and I'll do a review of that soon. Also, I've been finding out a lot about Robotron because it's not a game I've played a lot. It was a bit early in the arcade era for me. And, you know, I've loved games like Smash TV, Super Smash TV, and the twin stick shooters, which are fairly commonplace now, and they're all derived from Robotron. And for me not to have played it is shocking. So I'm gonna get that sorted, and I'll probably do a quick play on it in the upcoming week. Talking about videos next week, I'll be covering a bit of Gauntlet, I think. I think I'm gonna do a bite-sized video on level one and two caches. Yeah, because, you know, that's pretty interesting stuff. And I might do a system review on the ZX81 if I get enough time to squeeze it in. So that's what you've got to look forward to, along with everything else you do in your lives, which is probably more far, far more interesting. So anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. Also, I've been playing a lot of Tomb Raider on the uh, Xbox 360. That kind of counts as retro, doesn't it? Xbox 360 is what, over 10 years old. I'm always amazed what they can push out of that piece of hardware still. Rise of the Tomb Raider, awesome game. Now, on to some retro news. Now, back in the early 90s, I had great fun. I loved playing Space Crusade on my Commodore 64. It was one of the early Warhammer 40,000 type games. It was amazing just to get into that universe. And then later I went on to Space Hulk on the PC in about 94, and you could actually be inside the Terminator suit. It was mind blowing to my childlike mind. And since then, a lot of fans of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, you know, I've never really played the board games, but I'm a fan of the universe. I've been waiting for a game to kind of encapsulate that universe. And I'm very excited by Space Hulk Deathwing, where it looks like, you know, a, a modern version of the Space Hulk from the PC era in 94. You can actually be inside the Terminator suit. Looks amazing. It's from the same developers as who made uh, Gothic Armada, which was also a great game. So that is something I am very excited about. And they've also just announced Dawn of War 3. Sounds pretty damn awesome to me. Also, if you watched my video last weekend, you'll have heard about the Spectrum Next. It's a modern Spectrum. And I'm more excited about this than any of these other reboot retro machines like the 64 and the Vega, they just didn't really do it for me. The Spectrum Next looks immense to me. It looks like a modern Spectrum Plus should look like. And it sounds like it will be essentially a modern Spectrum. It's not got original hardware, it's using an FPGA modeled on the Z80 hardware. But that's better than emulation from a purity point of view. And 
yeah, you can clock dial it to 7 megahertz, and it comes with an expansion board. It just looks, feels like it will be a modern Spectrum. I love that you can plug original Spectrum accessories into the expansion port on the back. What, what a feature! Anyway, check out my video on that if you're interested. Also, Quake is 20 this month. 20 years old! My god, that game still feels practically brand new to me. Where has that time gone? 20 years? I remember when it came out, thinking, whoa, this is crazy! There's like 3D shit going on! You know, it wasn't quite up to the same playability as Doom for me, but it still feels like a modern game. 96, it's 2016 for fuck's sake. What the hell is happening? Anyway, I've got a GoTech drive to fit into my Amiga 1200, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos over the coming week.